gospel is the news of what is because of who God is, not what may be if your behavior changes God's mind on you. Newsflash, you aren't powerful enough to change who God is. He is the one whose love for you is not determined by your love for him because his love is not self-centered. God's mind has been made up of you since before the foundation of the world. Christ and him crucified is the revelation of his mind on you, his opinion on you, his name for you. Remember it? The one I love as I love my son. The one I speak to and give to as a father gives to his son. The one I withhold nothing from, even my own life. That's his name for you. You're the one he loves so much that he gave all he had to you in Christ. And so that you could receive the fullness of his love, he made sure he didn't give to you in response to your life, according to your works, but gave to you before you were even born, so that his love for you would never be limited by, never be shackled to your performance. Because that is how a father or a mother loves, isn't it? We don't wait to see how our children turn out before we love them or name them. Now to the religious mind, it is foolishness to call God your father, which is why no man can do it but by the Spirit of God. You will find no earthly religion that calls God father. But the foolishness of God is wiser than the wisdom of men, because men's thinking is based on earthly record, theirs, and God's thinking on an eternal record, his. That's why no man can receive the knowledge of God apart from God's own spirit, for his thoughts are as high above our thoughts as the heavens are above the earth. So when God speaks to you, he doesn't speak to you according to your earthly record, but according to his eternal grace and purpose given to you in Christ. Just ask Moses or Gideon or Mary, or how about Saul of Tarsus? All who were addressed by God with a name they had never heard anyone call them before. You know, he speaks to you in such a way that it doesn't leave you where you are, the victim of your circumstances, the product of your earthly record. He speaks to you in a way that calls you out of that life and into the one he has prepared for you. He speaks to you, he names you according to his purpose and grace given to you in Christ before you were even born. Why? For the same reason that when you were an infant, your parents never spoke to you as a dog, even though you behaved the way a dog behaved. They spoke to you as who they knew you to be, even when neither you nor your behavior agreed with that name. They spoke to you that way because they were calling you upwards into maturity. So too, when your Heavenly Father speaks to you, He calls you according to what He has given to you in Christ, in order that you would live that life, the life given in Christ. By the way, that's how you should always test prophecy. If a word is from the Lord, it should draw you out of yourself, not throw you back onto yourself. This means that although your Heavenly Father has great compassion on where you have ended up, although He will meet you in your pit, as He did Gideon, He cannot and He will not speak to you as a victim. You will get compassion from your Heavenly Father, but you will not get sympathy. Let me explain the difference. Sympathy is only able to say, per you, that's terrible what they did to you. Compassion says, what they did to you is terrible, but that's not who you are. You see, sympathy is content to leave you where it finds you. Compassion seeks to lift you into a better place. So I'm saying that God does not leave you to name yourself according to your life and to live that life. No child names themselves. Every child is named by their father and named after not their own life, but are named before they have done anything good or bad. No father should relate to his child primarily through the child's record. And that is exactly what Luke 15 tells us in Jesus' parable of the prodigal son, where he shows us God the Father, that he does not relate to us in that way either. The father in that parable, he refused to relate to either of his sons through their records. It was the sons who both tried to relate to their father through their record. By the end of that parable, Jesus describes one son as saying to the father, because of the life I have led, I am not worthy to be given entrance to your house. While the other son at the end of the parable is saying to the father, because of the life I have led, I am the one 
who is worthy of your house. The Father is simply pictured in treating both to enter into his love for them as sons, not workers. We enter into the life of a perfectly loved son by seeing how perfectly the Father loves us, Christ and him crucified. He loves us even to the giving of his own life and the Holy Spirit is the one who opens our eyes to see who he is by the light of the gospel of what is. Through the preaching of this gospel, the Father is still every day going out into the highways and byways of this world and entreating men and women to enter into the life he has prepared for them by receiving the calling, the name he gave to them before time began and revealed through Christ and him crucified. And I want to finish by believing in the power of the Holy Spirit right now to do what I cannot do. Open the eyes and ears of men and women listening to this message whom God is calling to see what is by the hearing of what is their name in Christ. So I declare to you what the Father is saying today to all those he is calling into the life he has prepared for them, a life hidden with Christ and God. You are the one I love as my son, the one I speak to and give to as a father gives to his son, the one I withhold nothing from, even my own life. You are the one I have saved and called with a holy calling, not according to your works, your life, but according to my own purpose and grace, which was given to you in Christ Jesus before time began. Now, through the proclamation of this truth of who God is, the Father who has given all he has, I break the power of the lie in your life that God has abandoned you by declaring to you the truth that there is no question of whether God will give to you, for that question was answered 2,000 years ago. There now remains only one question. Will you receive from him the truth of what is, the truth of who you are because of who he is? He is the God who cannot separate loving from giving, and so loved you in this way by giving you his Son, that you may believe in him and not perish, but have everlasting life. And I declare that if you believe this in your heart to be true, then you have already passed from death to eternal life, because no man can believe this unless the Holy Spirit is given to them. Now before you lies the most wonderful life, a life of growing up as one perfectly loved, what the Bible calls growing up into Christ. Now you are about to discover the truth of Jesus' promise when he said, come to me all who labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. God bless you.